For the past few years, the lines between high-end cinema cameras and affordable prosumer and consumer cameras have continued to blur. Let me put this on really quick and explain something. This video is sponsored by Professional Photographers of America. We'll talk about them in a second. Lately, I've been playing around with different cameras to see if they're actually that different. We have the Blackmagic 6K full frame cinema camera, whatever the, what is it called? And also I've been playing around with this camera, the Nikon Z8, which is a full frame mirrorless camera. But something I wanted to dive into today is, are these cameras really that different? This one's marketed as a full blown cinema camera. This one's marketed as a hybrid mirrorless beast. But me and you are trying to decide where to spend our hard-earned money, so which system should you invest in in 2024? I don't know, that's probably what we'll dive into today. First, we need to differentiate the two categories of mirrorless and cinema. So let's start with our old friendly pal, mirrorless. Are you guys nervous that the sensor's exposed? I'm not, it's what I do, I'm crazy. In my mind, the first big advantage and the first thing that separates most mirrorless cameras from cinema cameras is of course, autofocus. This is still kind of a highly debated topic. I feel like it's not as taboo as it used to be because some people have succumbed to the power of autofocus, including myself. I used to be diehard manual focus, but once I got actually into Sony cameras, like this FX30, I realize it's just an incredible tool that I wish every camera had as an option, but a lot of times cinema cameras will not have autofocus, especially really high-end ones like your Reds and Alexas and, and things of that nature. Now, the next thing that separates these two is usually hybrid capabilities. This is not only an incredible video camera, it can do 8K RAW, it can do 4K 120, internal ProRes HQ. Those are cinema camera features, by the way, but this can also shoot incredibly high resolution photos that look insane, man, like absolutely incredible quality, whereas cinema cameras are usually just high-end video functions. All right, another highly taboo topic in the photo video world on YouTube is IBIS, in-body image stabilization. A lot of times mirrorless cameras have this feature where if you don't know what it is, basically the sensor in the camera kind of floats around as you move the camera. There's like a little magnetic magical force or something that kind of keeps it steady as you're moving it. So you can get smoother footage just standing there or walking around. A lot of cinema cameras don't have this feature. They choose to leave the sensor mounted rock steady. And if you want really Really smooth footage, you put the camera on a gimbal or a steady cam or on some sort of mount like to a car or something. Another big advantage of mirrorless cameras is usually you don't have to build them out very much. They have a very small form factor. You can throw a microphone on there or like a wireless microphone pack like I have right here and have everything you need as a solo operator. And I think that's something that really appeals to me as a mirrorless camera user is I can just rig this thing out very minimally because with cinema cameras, a lot of times you don't have autofocus, which means you're using manual focus or cinema lenses. So you have to have an assistant, an AC pulling focus for you. And it, that's where you start to build up a crew just to make this thing work. Yes, you get incredible functions, image quality, everything, but sometimes it takes more people to get that image out of this camera. Whereas this is more of like a run and gun solo shooter style camera. And even the body designs of mirrorless is kind of inherited down from the DSLR generation of camera, like the 5D Mark II, the D800, those legendary cameras. I don't hate it, I don't love it either, but a lot of cinema cameras are just kind of like cubes, which a lot of people like because you can build them out how you want them. Blackmagic has not <laughs> made a cube yet, which is another debated topic. I actually do like how this camera feels, but it'd be kind of cool if we had a cube version as well. I'm sure they'll do it in the future, maybe. I don't know, I asked them and they said they couldn't tell me, so what do I know? Okay, so that's kind of the case for mirrorless cameras in 2024. So. What about It'll all make sense, let me swap lenses. This is really random, but I figured I'd show you guys my Les Paul that I inherited from my grandfather who passed away a couple months ago. Um, super random, but I, I don't know. Just wanted to show you guys while we talk about today's sponsor, Professional Photographers of America. My grandpa inspired me to be creative. He taught me guitar starting at nine years old, and we would go play in nursing homes together <laughs> when I was a little kid. And he just loved bringing joy to people through his creativity and his art. And so I'm trying to carry his legacy forward. Professional Photographers of America is one of the main reasons I'm able to do that. Because of them sponsoring the channel this year, I'm able to be full time and just focus on YouTube for the first time in eight years of me working on YouTube, so. I want you 
you guys to pay attention because this is actually something I think you should use, PPA. Their membership gives you up to $15,000. <laughs> but the main thing I want to tell you about is PPA's Indemnification Trust. <laughs> Basically, that just means that you can get help from them with data loss or if a client gets ticked off at you and you know comes at you with a legal dispute or something, you can actually get backed up by PPA because you have a membership with them. So I really think PPA would benefit you a lot. So at the very least, just click the link in the description, check it out, and you'll get a discount on your membership if you use my link and that would directly support this channel. You know, I got a kid on the way, baby, so I need all of the... <laughs> help I can get, dude. I'm gonna be changing so many diapers, so. Now, one huge benefit of cinema cameras over mirrorless cameras is you get set specific functions. So if you want to be working on filmmaking sets with crews, a cinema camera is absolutely the way to go. Here's why. You get things like time chode, which will, <laughs> so it makes easier, makes easier to sync and post with audio. That's a good sentence. I'm not changing it either. You also get awesome things like full size HDMI output. And a lot of cinema cameras have SDI output. SDI and HDMI out are amazing if you want to send the feed from the camera to a wireless monitor. So the director or the client can view it while you're shooting on the camera and they're not peeking over your shoulder, freaking you out, making you sweaty. Another thing with cinema cameras is the mounts themselves right here. Oh, I almost touched the sensor. The mounts usually favor high-end lenses, and a lot of cinema cameras, you can even swap the mount for different styles of lenses. And honestly, it's not even that big of a point anyway, because there's so many adapters out there right now. But a lot of times, these cinema cameras are built to function with really high-end glass. The next thing I want to mention is cinema cameras often have amazing internal codecs like RAW. In post-production, you get full control over things like ISO, tint, temperature, some other stuff that I can't remember because I'm kind of tired, you know, that, that stuff. Yeah, cool. Another amazing feature that usually is just on cinema cameras is something called open gate. And yeah, don't freak out Lumix fans. I know your S5 II and 2X have open gate. It's amazing. Basically, open gate is a feature where your entire sensor is recording your video files. So you get the entire readout, all of the real estate of the sensor in your video, which is more pixels, which makes it easier to crop vertically or horizontally. So it's really great if you're doing social media stuff for clients, but you're also making a bigger like horizontal production as well. And probably the most important feature that most cinema cameras have over mirrorless is internal ND filters. This is something that I like can't wait for technology to advance so that we can have that in mirrorless cameras. My theory is that we could already have that technology, but I think camera companies are withholding that so that people buy their high-end cinema cameras still. Yeah, even like this camera is humongous, the, the full frame, but but they didn't put internal NDs. Maybe it's something with the full frame sensor or the flange distance of the L mount. I don't know. That's genuinely my biggest gripe with this cinema camera. Okay, so we've made our case for mirrorless. We've made our case for cinema cameras. Now, which one should you invest in from the point of view of a stupid white dude on the internet sitting on a desk? If you are a beginner, absolutely avoid cinema cameras in the beginning. Stick with a mirrorless camera. You're gonna have all those fun, easy functions like in body image stabilization, autofocus, automatic settings on the camera when you first start. It's gonna be way easier for you to learn gradually on a mirrorless camera, whereas a cinema camera will feel like jumping into a lake and trying to not drown. If you're a solo operator who sometimes works with a crew, this is the kind of cameras I think you guys should use. I wrote them down. I think the FX30, which I'm filming on right now, is genuinely insane for the price, and it's great at photography, video, content creation. It has really great audio functions with the top handle you can get and it's super affordable dude it's crazy affordable the image is great also the fx30's bigger brother the fx3 if you have the budget that camera is just absolutely freaking ridiculous also the c70 is a fantastic option for solo operators who maybe want to do some bigger productions as well as the sony fx6 if you're somebody who wants to be a full-time DP, camera operator, cinematographer, there's so many options out there. But for me, like a great option was the Ursa G2 when I was primarily camera operating. And obviously if you're more photography focused,
artist and you maybe you do a little bit of video on the side or something like that, obviously go with mirrorless cameras. They're gonna give you way more function, photos specifically, and you get something like amazing viewfinders, which a lot of the cameras have now. So you can use the viewfinder to take photos or you can pull it away from your face and use the screen. Every company now is making insane cameras. It's really just coming down to great ideas and execution at this point. But I just wanted to try to help you guys out if you are struggling on deciding between just using a phone, a mirrorless cinema camera or high-end camera. So yeah, if you've been here for a while, comment how we do in so I can see like if there are any OGs still sticking around or if it's all just random people at this point. I don't know. I love you guys so much. Let me know what you guys want to see because I still like talking about retro cameras and new cameras if they're actually interesting or beneficial to you and me. So all of that to say, you guys are amazing. Subscribe if you want, like if you don't, and uh, yeah, love you guys so much. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.